I believe this is cryptoarithmetic with YouTube. Get rich with crypto. The video you're about to watch is one that I recorded some time ago, but when YouTube was doing a purge of videos from lots and lots of cryptocurrency channels in June 2019 and again in December 2019, January 2020, I took off all my videos. I'm now going to every now and then put one back on for your delectation and education and information. Enjoy. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe, comment, like, and please follow me on the censorship resistant platforms, particularly BitTube, but also Library Odyssey and BitChute. Get yourself a good quality hardware wallet. I recommend the Elipal wallet. Discount with the link in the description below. Hi everybody, this is Crypto Rich working with you to get rich with crypto, filling our pockets with crypto profits. And in this video, I'm going to take a quick look at Grin and Beam in terms of their privacy. And I'm also going to assert that they're not as private as everybody is talking about or as everybody thinks. Now, they are great projects and it is a new protocol, way more scalable than um, Bitcoin, but not as private as everybody's making out. And this is actually a truncated argument, a shorter argument for a video that I did a couple of weeks ago, which I'll link to at the end of this, which went into more detail, but I thought I'd do a shorter version as well. Now, before I proceed, of course, I got to let you know that this is not investment advice. Do your own due diligence and do not invest any more than you can afford to lose. And, uh, you know, you got you got to check things out for yourself. I may make mistakes. I may miss miss stuff out. And all I'm doing in this video and all my other videos is sharing with you what I'm discovering as I travel along on the blockchain. Okay, now, before I go into that, a quick word from our sponsor. A quick word from our sponsor, I mine with Elevate Group. I visited their facilities in Irkut, Siberia. You own your own miner. Distributions are done once a month over the NEM blockchain, so it's all transparent. Very low cost structure, electricity at five and a half cents per kilowatt hour. But for 10 months of the year, no electricity is needed to keep the place cool because it is in Siberia. You have personal support. You can get that from the Telegram group, bit.ly slash elevate telegram will take you straight to the telegram group uh your access to bitmain so the repairs and maintenance are included there's a repair facility in urkut 20 minutes away from the mining facility and you have your own personal mining dashboard so you can see your miners 24 hours a day seven days a week if you want to know more go to the website bit.ly elevate group mining or again check out the telegram group so I'm going to compare Grin and Beam with Pirate Chain. Pirate Chain is a privacy coin that I've been involved in for a few months. It's a community coin, just like uh, Grin is. And Pirate Chain professes to be the most private of all the cryptocurrencies. And we're going to look and see, are, are Grin and Beam, are they really, really as private as they claim to be? or And is Pirate Chain as, as private as, as it claims to be? And I'm going to start actually by showing you how to purchase Pirate Chain, right? Because I'm involved with Pirate Chain. I cov I've covered it. I like it. And I like getting Pirate Chain. This is Dextat.info. I'll have a link in the description below. It's a very, very easy way of buying Pirate. And uh, one of the advantages is that um, some of the proceeds, you, you purchase Pirate with Komodo, some of the proceeds then are then go to the pirate chain community fund for growing and developing pirate chain now you can purchase uh 7.77 pirate or 77.7 pirate or triple seven pirate okay now so what i need to do here is i need to put in my zs address pirate is migrating over to sapling so if your address begins with z you want to move it before february the 10th real fast to the ZS address and how you find out is you go to the telegram group and I'll have a link in the description below for that but also there's uh, I'll have a link on swapping your sapling address your non sapling address to your sapling address so I'm going to paste in here my pirate address and then I am going to purchase triple seven pirate and click on that so hold on so I've put in my address here underneath this and because it's a privacy coin I'll put it in I've covered it up, I've obscured it to keep it private, although even if you did know it, you wouldn't be able to see anything inside it or what I did with it. But anyway, now I can choose how much Pyra I want to purchase, and I'm going to go for 777, 31.08 KMD. I need to send it to this address, and it's really important that I send the exact amount, 31.08. Only KMD are accepted here. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to send 31.08 KMD to this address. That's done. I've sent 3108 Komodo for 777. I now have a referral link that you can use. This helps the channel out and uh, it helps the pirate community out because some of uh, some of the Komodo that you raise, that they raise through this, will go towards the, uh, the development of Komodo and the marketing of Komodo and getting the word out. 
Okay, so I'll have that link. You don't have to use that link, but it does help me out as well. All right, now let's have a look at this article. Uh, Mimble Wimble Coins. This is by Flexitron. Now I've done a couple, a couple of videos references referencing his articles where I compare uh, Pirate with other privacy coins, and we've done Monero. I think we did Bitcoin Private and Verge. This one is between Bean Grin versus Private Pirate. A technical comparison between the long anticipated implementations of Mimble Wimble called Bim, Beam and Grin and the upcoming private cryptocurrency Pirate. To make that a little bit smaller, so that's it. Okay, I don't know what's happening to my. Uh, do you know I'm going to take that off? Let's just take it off because I'm going to be reading most of this anyway. This is web paint. Let's take that all off. Gone. Gone. Bye bye, web paint. Okay, so welcome to the fifth, fifth installment of this Pirate Versus series. This is a special one as we host two recent Mimble Wimble implementations called Beam and Grin. So let's have a look. Mimble Wimble is a much anticipated protocol as it received quite some attention and hype around Beam and Grin. The protocol, the protocol prevents the blockchain from expelling personal information like the addresses used and amounts sent, hence the name Mimble Wimble. I think Mimble Wimble is a term from the Harry Potter series. Uh, and it's to do with um, making something invisible. Mimblewimble combines a modified version of, C of confidential transactions, which is what Monero uses, uh, to hide amounts and one-way aggregate signatures in order to combine transactions. This cut-through feature, which merges transactions when an output is directly spent by the input of another, makes Mimblewimble implementations more scalable on-chain than Bitcoin. Only a small piece of data called a kernel, kernel, about 100 bytes, needs to stay around for each transaction and 3 kilobytes per unspent output. This decreases blockchain storage needed. So Mimblewimble uses a whole lot less memory and uh, this makes it very, very scalable, way more scalable than Bitcoin. There are two main properties of Mimblewimble that should make usage of Mimblewimble coins private. One, there are no addresses visible on the blockchain. No addresses. Now this makes it more private than Monero, more private than Zcash, TokenPay, Verge, any privacy coin you name, right? Apart from, well, we don't know yet, right? Unless you've watched the video interview I did with um, Jason about apart from Pirate Chain, but we'll look at Pirate Chain in a moment. There are no amounts visible on the blockchain. Well, this makes it more private, makes uh, Grin and Beam more private than Zcash or Monero or uh, Verge or any of those other pri privacy coins because you can see some amounts, there is some data, and you can have a look on uh, Beam's Block Explorer. This feature is much like pirate transactions where addresses are shielded and no amounts are visible on the blockchain as well. So it's the same deal with Grin and Beam and Pirate. No transactions are visible and all addresses are shielded. Now, I will get comments whenever I do a pirate video, well, what about Apollo Coin and what about Token Pay and what about uh, this one and that one and that one, right? Well, look, they might all be really, really great coins. They might have lots and lots of other bells and whistles. I'm just looking at the privacy. And in terms of the privacy, you can't get more private than invisible. You know, you can't get more private than all transactions and all addresses being shielded. With Pirate and Green and Beam, transactions conducted by the, sorry, transactions conducted by the Member Wimble protocol are private by default, which is vital for fungibility of the coins and anonymity of the users. So what's fungibility mean? It means that every coin has to be exactly the same and completely exchangeable for another coin. Now the problem with Bitcoin and Litecoin and other pseudonymous coins is they're not completely fungible because this particular Bitcoin, the one I got here in my hand here, my left hand here, has a different history because you can see the addresses that it's been to, all the TX, all the transactions and stuff that have happened before. This one, another Bitcoin, has a different history and the history is never ever shared. So the two aren't exactly the same. So they're not completely fungible. But with Pirate and with Grin and Beam, you, you have no history. You don't know where they've been. So they're fungible, way more fungible. They're different in their tokenomics. Beam aims to stimulate development through the implementation of a 20% block reward founder's fee, while Grin is dependent upon community efforts and the sale of merchandise, for instance. Now, Pirate Chain is also dependent upon community efforts. Now, the emission schedule. Beam has decreasing block rewards, so it's deflationary. 100 Beam in the first year, then 50 Beam, 25 Beam, etc. Every four years, so there's a halving. One minute block time, which is the same as Grin, and it's the same as Pirate Chain. 20% founders fee, a capped supply at 262.8 million beam. 
consensus algorithm Equihash and the program is C++. Themes are denominated in, in a hundred million groth, named after a renowned computer scientist. Grin, a constant block reward of 60 grin. Get this, a constant block reward of 60 grin. So there's no reducing supply. Every block is 60. Every block is 60. Every block is 60. Forever and ever and ever and ever. One minute block time, no founder's fee, no capped supply. No capped supply. Is there going to be a million grin? No, there's going to be more. Is there going to be a billion grin? No, there's going to be more. Is there going to be a trillion grin? No, there's going to be more. Consensus algorithm, cuckoo cycle, proof of work, programmed in Rust. Now, a large disadvantage of Mimble Wimble is that in order to finalize the transaction and thereby receive beam or grin, both parties of the transaction need to show their IP address and an open port when sending from wallet to wallet. Now, this is quite inconvenient because you're not always online to receive a transaction and it leaves room for attack vectors. Now, there are solutions. You can transact offline with Beam or Grin, such as using Beam's secure bulletin board system, which requires you to share an encrypted message directed to the receiver containing their public key through a chosen, chosen channel, which then decrypts it using the known key from the channel. Grin uses slates, which is a method needing the exchange of a transaction file between sender and receiver, requiring three operations and two message exchanges. Now, this is even before you send the money. With both Grin and Beam, you're sharing encrypted metadata and anonymity in Grin offline depends on the medium the transaction file is shared. All right, so if you just do it via text message or something, say using Mighty Text on your computer, then it ain't, well, one, it's inconvenient, but it ain't that private because you have to interact. The Mimblewimble protocol itself is non-interactive as it doesn't need other transactions as much as the original CoinJoin protocol for privacy, but the way transactions are finalized is very much interactive as nodes need to be online to receive transactions or have to perform actions online, not necessarily both at the same time. Okay, so one is I can see that it is inconvenient. It is inconvenient and it does require this level of interactivity between the two uh, parties involved in the transaction. Not so, um, say buying the, buying the pirate of deck stacks was pretty simple. Pretty, pretty simple. And by the way, you could have a look at this, this transaction ID and it won't tell you anything. Let's have a look. Here it goes. There's the transaction ID and shielded. Which address did it go to? Can't see. You can't see anything. You don't know what my address is or the address that it went to, even if it was my address. Okay, so let's have a look at Pirate. Pirate is an asset chain, an independent blockchain out of the Komodo ecosystem, which makes it based on Zcash test tech, because Zcash was a fork of Bitcoin, which, and Komodo forked off Zcash, and Pirate has forked off Komodo. Now, Zcash uses specific zero-knowledge proofs, zero-knowledge, succinct, non-interactive arguments of knowledge, which allows transactions data to be validated without revealing any information about the amounts and the parties involved when transacting between shielded addresses. So how much information is revealed? No information. No information is revealed whatsoever. Furthermore, the transacting parties do not need to be online to receive and confirm the transaction. The technology relies on a trusted setup. However, with the coming of the sapling upgrade and with that, the powers of tower, which I know nothing about, the probability of collusion becomes virtually impossible. See, powers of Tau ceremony. Well, I'm not going to do that. You should check that out for yourself, right? But with the sapling upgrade, it means that ZK Snark technology doesn't need to use as much memory as it did before. So you, you actually, we actually now have the possibility of um, mobile wallets for Pirate and Zcash and other privacy coins that take on Zapling. Now, Richard Fluffy Pony Spagney, one of Monero's core team members, even openly stated that ZK Snarks provides stronger untraceability characteristic than Monero confidential transactions. Now, interesting here, right? Because he's one, he's one of the devs of Monero, one of the founders of Monero. So he's saying that ZK Snarks is way more untraceable, way more private than Monero's confidential transactions. Grin and Beam use confidential transactions. But let's check this out. Here's a tweet from um, Ricardo Spagney, Fluffy Pony. There are absolute, there absolutely are better products. Mimble Wimble provides significantly better scaling properties than Monero, and Zcash's ZK Snarks provide much stronger untraceability characteristics than Monero, but a much smaller privacy set and much higher systemic risks. Okay, so let's go back here. 
here, like I said. Pirate, what makes Pirate unique is that it's a four shielded transactions only blockchain utilizing ZK Snarks technology. The best privacy tech there is and its chain is protected by the Bitcoin hash rate through delayed proof of work. So Pirate chain is resistant to 51% attacks because every 10 minutes, the, the hash, the transactions are notarized from the Pirate blockchain onto the Komodo blockchain and then every 10 minutes, all those transactions are bundled together and notarize in a hash on the Bitcoin blockchain, which means to be able to double spend Pirate, you would need to be, have the 51% of the hashing power of Pirate and of Komodo and of Bitcoin. Forget it, it ain't gonna happen. Now, it, the, this article doesn't say anything about Grin and Beam's uh, resistance to 51% um, attacks, but unless it's specifically stated, and if they're proof of work coins, I doubt very, very much they're gonna be immune to 51% attacks, especially given the size that they are. So to, in my mind, this is another plus for Pirate, okay? Uh, so, because it makes it way more secure. Now, if you know that Grin and Beam are more, are resistant to 51% attacks, put it in the description, in the comment. Let me know what you think and how come, all right? The result of this feature is that R is shielded dramatically increasing the fungibility and anonymity of the uses of the blockchain for sending funds. Furthermore, Pirate supports Tor to obfuscate to cover up high geographic location. And what is this feature? Well, Pirate is mined into a transparent address but can only go into a shielded address from there. So here's the mining machine and here's the first wallet. Sends the Pirate to this first wallet. You can see this transaction because then you know that they're not inflating the supply. You know, that the miners haven't changed the algorithm into give them an advantage by printing hundreds and hundreds of millions of pirate coin, right? But once it goes into this wallet, anything that comes out, you can't see. All invisible. Can't see in the wallet and you can't see what comes out of the wallet. So let's look at the technical characteristics of pirate. Blockchain 60 seconds, same as Grin and Beam. Mining algorithm Equihash. Delayed proof of work security. Transaction fee. Capped supply at 200 million R. So what was it for Beam? 262.8 million beam. So Pirate's going to have a lower supply than beam and certainly a lower supply than Grin, which is not capped at all. Transactions per second, 34 transactions per second. Doesn't say here what it is for Grin and beam, but they are more scalable. Transaction size, two kilobytes to 200 kilobytes because Grin and beam have a much, much smaller transaction size. Ability to send 100 addresses simultaneously in one transaction and Pirate sports tour to obfuscate geographic location. So you don't have to share your IP address like you do with Mimblewimble. A big advantage of Pirate compared to Mimblewimble coins is that transactions are finalized on the blockchain without the need of the receiving party being online. So you know, so you, you could send somebody Pirate and they don't need to go online for several years. And when they do and they check in their wallet, they're, 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 those Pirate coins are there. A big hurdle thus far for Zcash has been the development of simple payment verification for sealed addresses. When this is developed into completion, however, it would mean one of the only large disadvantages of ZK Snarks would be eliminated. So here's the conclusion. Uh, all three of them have private transactions only. ZK Snarks with Pirate Chain and Sapling, Mimble Wimble used by a um, confidential transaction used by Grin and Beam. Deflanary, deflationary emission, i.e. reducing supply for Pirate and Beam. Linear emission, unlimited, uncapped for Grin. Interactive transactions for Beam and Grin, non-interactive transactions for Pyra. Uh, Equihash plus delayed proof of work for uh, Pyra, Equihash for Beam, and Cuckoo Cycle, which I haven't looked into at all for Grin. Community funded is Grin, Pyra is also community funded, and Beam is a corporation with 20% founders reward per mind block. Mimblewimble coins and Pirate all provide privacy by default, which is a big advantage for all three when it comes to privacy and, and anonymity. And really, you can't get more private than this. You can't get more private than completely invisible. A large drawback to Mimblewimble implementations, however, is the interactive nature of the finalization of the transactions. The need for your node to be online combined with revealing the IP address hurts privacy and security. Pirate has the edge in anonymity and security, but Mimblewimble has an advantage in scalability for now. Both protocols can be improved in terms of usability. Pirate in developing light wallets with Z address functionality and Mimblewimble in making transaction finalization non-interactive and more secure. Thanks for reading and follow the links for more info about Pirate and Mimblewimble.
Thank you very much. The links will be in the description below, as will this article. Let me know, what do you think? How come Mimblewimble is getting all this attention and nobody knows about the sleeping giant that is Pirate? All right, so let me know what you think about Beam. Let me know what you think about Grin and Pirate. And any comments that you have, please subscribe, hit the notification bell. I am going to be covering Pirate. I do like this project. I do like Komodo projects. I have more videos coming up about Komodo and other stuff, including uh, in due course Electronium, Elevate Group, other projects that I'm looking at. And between now and when I see you next, please keep filling your pockets with crypto profits. This is Crypto Rich signing out. All the best. Bye-bye.